want to start with Ron DeSantis because I cannot figure out, I mean, in many respects I can, why this guy went from hero to zero with me. You know, I really like this guy, and I'm not liking him more and more as I watch him. I, I, I called him wimpy and wussy-like after the last debate. So let me play a clip. Maybe you can help me figure out why that's happening to me and so many others as he falls in the polls. Um, this is him with his weird smile. I think smiles. I can, yeah. And I vetoed wasteful spending when it came to my desk. And as your president, when they send me a bloating spending bill that's going to cause your prices to go up, I'm going to take out this veto pen and I'm going to send it right back to them. Ilya, you mentioned me in the question. I just want to address. All right. So, like, right. to me, it just comes off. How long do you phony, have, Greg? How long yeah, do you have? Go for there, it. there are a handful Lay it of things, me, brother. <laughs> so there are a handful of things. First of all, resting face matters. How a person intakes data matters. When I do our show, I sit stone faced and people think I have no emotion. I have emotion. I'm just listening to you. He doesn't. He has a weird smile in his resting face. Look at that head bobbing thing he does. Really, when you're in front of an audience, you have two real control mechanisms for communicating. Illustrators moving my hands here, making my point, and then uh, um, regulators where I'll stop. Can you see me uh, where, I, where I'll yeah. stop like this? So what he's doing is poor job of, of illustrating and he's using his head to do it. And he's blinking his eyes. That looks weak and out of control. He needs some coaching badly. Did he always do this or is it just on the debate stage? Because, you know, I watched him after the debate on with Sean Hannity and I was like, man, he was better here in this interview than he was on the debate stage. I think he's just poorly prepared for what he needs to do on stage. And if he could learn to use his hands more effectively, raise his hands up to where I, what one of my partners, Mark Bowden, calls a truth plane, where you're up in here, not way down below the table, it sends a clearer message for the person. And do away with that goofy smile. Go to a flat face. All right. Let me, <laughs> goofy smile, too. I mean, I let could me go play, on, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let me play uh, him using, this is, this is cut three, guys, uh, where he's using these minimal hand gestures. Again, another one of him. This is our time for choosing. We will send Joe Biden back to his basement and we will reverse the decline of this country. I'm a blue collar kid. I work minimum wage jobs to be able to make ends meet. I understand the importance of the American dream and I know how that slipped away from so many millions of Americans. As your president, I will not let you down. God bless you all. All right, so again, he's still doing the, the head bob thing. You know, Greg, I remember when I was back on that other network and you would come on with me, I think yep. we compared him to President Trump and he was using the same President Trump moves. That Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, for sure. He, he mimicked President Trump and he looked stronger when he did. Look, look uh, President Trump has unique body language. He also has, I mean, Trump has his own thing and he's got some things that you might consider goofy, but they're strong goofy versus weak goofy. So what he's doing here when he's not raising his hand to make a point, when he doesn't raise a finger to make a point, compare him to, to Vivek, who's all over the board with his hands. He makes a clearer message. And the strongest player on the stage that night in terms of good illustrators is Tim Scott because he's always dead on. He's always where you can see him. His hands are up above the table. Look at that. I mean, that's powerful, strong body language.